So you think you've heard a murmur? Don't panic. In this video, we'll be taking you through the basics of what to do next. Unfortunately, we don't have any fancy sample murmurs for you to listen to. For those, we'd strongly advise you go stick your stethoscope on some real life patients. On to the diagnosis. The first step in diagnosing the murmur is to correctly identify where it occurs during the cardiac cycle. Feel the radial pulse while you listen. Systole is the period during the upstroke of the pulse, coinciding with the first heart sound. Murmurs can therefore be classified as systolic or diastolic. Systolic murmurs can be further differentiated into ejection systolic murmurs and pansystolic murmurs. That's throughout systole. Diastolic murmurs can be further differentiated into early diastolic and mid-diastolic. Now it's okay for this to seem confusing at first. Much like the work of Pink Floyd, murmurs are complex and true understanding can only come from sustained listening over time. Let's take a closer look at four common murmurs, starting with... Mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis is a mid-diastolic murmur. It is best heard by listening over the apex using the bell of the stethoscope. It's easier to hear if you ask the patient to hold their breath and roll to the left. Mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation is a pansystolic murmur. It's also typically heard over the apex, this time using the diaphragm. MR often radiates up into the axilla. Aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis is the classic ejection systolic murmur. It's most often heard over the aortic area and commonly radiates to the carotid arteries. Aortic regurgitation. Aortic regurgitation is an early diastolic murmur, most often heard in the tricuspid region. It's best heard by leaning the patient forward, asking them to take a deep breath in and out and hold. Murmurs are graded on a scale of one to six. In general, the presence of a palpable thrill indicates a higher grading, while murmurs that are trickier to hear don't score quite so many points. The important thing to take away is that identification is difficult for all but the most obvious of murmurs. Take your time and be honest about what you can and can't hear. Even if you're unsure of the diagnosis, identifying the timing, location and volume of the murmur gives you more than enough to be getting on with. Once you feel you have a good grasp of what you've heard, you can move on to the rest of the exam. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, found it useful, uh, why not subscribe to our channel? You can do it by uh, clicking that button there. You can see some of the other videos in our series on clinical examination, uh, just below me, just down there. And uh, why not send us some helpful feedback? Till next time.